Good evening. Oh, good morning. Uh, hope you're all having joyous times in these interesting days. All this weird weather of late. Weird coincidences, weird phenomenons. All very interesting and very intriguing to hear about with the daily news, it seems, you know. You don't get all the full picture these days, it seems. I mean, I do gotta wonder, though. It's very interesting to see how interesting all these storms have become over the last set period of time. Almost as if they were being manipulated in some way. Hmm. What if, by some random chance, an individual created a device that actually allowed, allowed humanity to manipulate the weather? Oh, yes. You're like, wait, what? What is this you speak of? No, 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 it's not manipulatable. It is. And we're about to explore it. Come with me and let's find out. Is this little story, is the weather manipulation conspiracy? Or just a theory? Or more than you believe? Let's find out who is this inventor that created such a device. Pain in the ass, it did it again. Stop it! Get piece. Did it again. I'll take care of those later. Yes, you probably heard the damn camera taking a picture, but that's only because of when I grip it, it does something like that. For some reason, I don't know why. Okay, here we go. Weather manipulation. Also, FYI, there is a large, large, it's 159 pages worth of in a PDF file on this. So this is more of a summary of the weather manipulation. On mostly of the inventor of it. But I left a PDF file if you wish to go through and read it. I'll be reading it here eventually and, and maybe give you guys a bit of a rundown. Because it's going to be a very interesting one. I'll get back to you on that. But shall we find out what is this machine? And what made it so controversial? Give me that. Pain in the butt. <clears throat> All right, Vincent Scuffer and the invention of cloud seeding. Shall we begin? This depiction shows what he did. So, as such, the... I can't really explain it. This diagram sucks. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This diagram actually sucks. <sighs> oh. It is explained right here. On July 4th, 1906, American chemist and meteorologist Vincent Joseph Schofer was born... Was born. Schofer is best known for his research in meteor, meteorology and weather control, inducing cloud seeding. On the 13th of November, 1946, he flew over Mount Greylock... Oh, in Massachusetts, successfully seeding clouds with pellets of dry ice, solid carbon dioxide to my drifting is bad today to produce the first snowstorm initiated by man. Did you hear that? First snowstorm initiated by man in the year 1946 on November 6th. Ah, huh, and you say weather well, manipulation isn't possible. Sorry, dear friends. It is. It's all of their bigger agenda. We'll get into that eventually as well. I have so much more to talk about with so many things. But uh, that's not till like later, later. Maybe episode 25 and up. I don't know. Those will be very interesting times. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> and we have Vincent Scoffer's early years of his days. Shall we venture forth and see what else we come to find? Let us find out. 
During his 20 years, Vincent Scoffers began to build up a personal library on natural history, science, and establishing groups sharing his interests, e.g. the Mohawk Valley Hiking Club and Von Epps Hartley Chapter of the New York Archaeology Association. In order to support the family increase, Scoffer left high school and joined a four-year appointed Mechanic, machinist course at General Electric. During his second year, their scoffer was greeted with a one-month leave to accompany Dr. Arthur C. Parker, New York State archaeologist, on an expedition to central New York. After his apprenticeship, Vin- Vincent Scoffer worked in at the at the <clears throat> excuse me at the machine shop at the General Electric Research Laboratory as a tool maker at the research laboratory make uh, at the laboratory machine shop Scoffer built equipment for a long longmore and his research associate Catherine B. Blockett, as a research assistant, Vincent Scoffer, Scoffer published many reports on the areas he studied, which include surface chemistry techniques, electric microscoping techniques, polarization, and affinity of ice for various services, protein and other money. Mon- give me a moment. Monolayers, studies of a protein films, television tube, oh boy, television tube, remember those days? <laughs> television tube brightness, and submer- <clears throat> submicroscoping proticulations. At an empty of Scoffer's latest contributions to surface science is the description in 1938 of a technique Developed by him and Legmar, later known as the Langmar Scoter method, for the control transfer of money layers to the substrate and a moni- modification of the Langmar Scof- Legmar Blodgett method. That's a lot of words, yeah. This is going to be very educational. That was a backdraft of the early years. Shall we begin and find out more? I think we shall. Submarine detection and smoke generation generators. Ooh, how intriguing. Always wondered how these began. Before World War II started, Scofa was made research associate and con- uh, <clears throat> continued his work with... Lagma, which included research on gas mask filtration of smoke, submarine detection with funeral sound, and formation of artificial fogs using smoke generators, a project which researched fr- fruit sh- oh my goodness, fruit I can't speak one moment. Fruit sh- it literally has the word fruit, and then for some reason it's got the IOA at the back. Fruitation? I don't know. <clears throat> At Vumer's Nose in in uh, Shkarhari Valley, I feel like I butchered that, with a demonstration for military observation. Scofer also became internationally recognized for development of a method to make re- repli- replicas of individual Snowflakes using a thin plastic coating. Hmm. Fake snow, anyone? Hmm. Gonna make you wonder how they did certain things. And yes, today's gonna be probably a bit of shorter than usual. I know that some of my videos have gone long, but, uh, you know, I didn't really want to go overboard on an hour again. Although yesterday's video was great. I'm not going to lie. It was actually really fun to read that one. <clears throat> Next section. Rain making in a laboratory. Hmm. Still think weather manipulation is not real? Hmm. I beg to differ. 
Around 1943, Vincent Schofer performed many experiments at the Mount at Mount Washington Observatory in New Wa in New Hampshire, where he started to find his cold box to warm for some lab laboratory tests he wanted to perform. Determining to get on with his work, he located some dry ice and placed it into the bottom of the cold box, creating a co creating a cloud with his breath. He observed a sudden here to <clears throat> here to fur. I'm gonna spell this out: H E R E T O F O R E. Unseen bluish haze that suddenly turned into a millions of microscopic ice crystals that dazzled him into a strobe light chamber. He had stumbled onto the very principle that was hidden in all his previous experiments. He discovered the stimulation effect of sudden change in heat and cold, humidity, in, sub in supercooling water, spontaneously producing billions of ice Nuclei. Through scores of repeated experiments, he quickly developed a method to seed supercooled clouds with dry ice. Hmm. How intriguing. This is a very interesting read. I'm not going to lie. Hmm. Wow. Makes you wonder. Is that what all those jet fuels across the skies are really doing? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Makes you ask questions. That's the fun part. We have to ask questions. Because if you don't ask questions, then how will you know the answers? Especially when the time comes for certain things. We're well, not to know everything. But at the same time, how are you to know without asking the question? We can't just dilly-dally and sit about. Sometimes you have to ask the questions. Even the very hard ones. When all that they say is to become normal. Don't let that become normal. Ask the question. Because you won't get a damn answer without asking. Moving on. <clears throat> the field test. After all these countless experiments, he goes to the field test. We go from 1943 to November 1946. Schofer conducted a successful field test seeding a natural cloud by airplane. Hmm, doesn't that sound familiar, ladies and gentlemen? With, with dramatic ice and snow effects, he resulted publicly about brought an ab abundancy of new correspondence this time from people and businesses making requests for snow and water as well as scientists around the world also working on a weather modification oh my would you look at that weather modification yes i'm sorry people it's real get over it to change local weather conditions oh my and i'm not being sarcastic actually that is actually kind of scary to think about Oh, and on a side note, please pray for Florida, because they're going through a rough time. That hurricane was very rough on them the other week. Please. They need it. <clears throat> Moving on. Better. Schofer's discovery also led to, a de to debates over the appropriate appro appropriation uh, appropriateness Oh my goodness. Pretty much the tampering of weather with natural through cloud seeding and in the addition successfully field test enabled a Lumera to obtain federal funding to support additional research in the cloud seeding and weather manipulation by GE Research Laboratory. Scuffa was coordinated at the laboratory portion of projects curious while the Air Force and Navy supplied the aircraft and pilots to carry the field tests and collect the data used at the research laboratory. Field tests were conducted in the, skank, in the sanctuary. 
<sighs> in sanctity areas as well as Puerto Rico and New Mexico. Ha! Huh. Puerto Rico and New Mexico. That's interesting. Very. And sorry for beginning a little off task today. It's just this is making me think about all the times on which that the weather didn't look right. Because there is many things that they hide from us. It might not seem like a lot, but they do. There's a reason that those damn jets go over. Last of the sections. And then we're going to go through a little bit of something afterwards. <clears throat> the later years of Vincent Scoffer. Scoffer helped found the Atmospheric Science Research Center also known as ASRC, in the 1960s and served as its director of research until 1966, when he became... Wait, what? That didn't sound correct. He became another director? Mm -hmm. Scoffer brought highly qualified atmospheric science research to ASRC, many of whom he had bet through, met, not bet, met through his work at GE, and Mandible? I think it says Mandible. Bernard Van Gogh, Raymond Falker, and Duncan Blatchard were all ventures of the project Serious, curious, uh, okay, okay, there's somebody by the name of C of Curious, C-R-R-R-U-S, I think I butchered that name, who joined Scoffer's, Scoffer at ASRC during his years at ARC, in addition to the, U, to the NSI summer programs. Scoffer led annual research expeditions to Yellowstone National Park for atmospheric scientists to work in the outdoors laboratories that are provided each January. In the 1970s, Scoffer's own research interests focused on solar energy, aerosols, gases, air quality, pollution, particles in the atmosphere. Hmm. Interesting. And yes, I know I've been going on a bit of a tangent with a few things. But remember, we all look at things differently. Moving on. His work in some of these areas culminated in three-part reports on air quality on the global scale in 1978. Hmm. So this is the man behind a bunch of it. Hmm. Interesting. Makes you wonder about something. I really have to ask the question on this one. With the ability to manipulate the clouds and manipulate certain weather patterns, would that be into another certain type of agenda upon which that they try to claim as a climate change hmm it almost sounds like to me they want to make something up and try to make it make something into something real use their fantasies hmm or should I say try to control us under other means that technically would be acts of God when actually man is tampering with things that he shouldn't employ And before you ask, no, I don't believe in climate change. It's actually the opposite. The weather's not getting... The weather's getting crazy, yes. But things are meant to get crazy. Because even when man tries to temper with Mother Nature herself, she'll still bite back. She'll bite back harder. We're never truly in control, gentlemen. We're not. I know that this explains the way that we're able to be. But she'll still have her way with us. One day. Regardless. It's all up to you. Take this in as you wish. I'm not the one who's to be convinced. I'm just here to give information. That's all I'm here for. That's all I want to do. 
And I hope that you may have found some of this intriguing. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you found something that you can talk about at the dinner table and say, hey, I learned something today. Who knows? All I know is, is it just a conspiracy? Is it just a theory? Or is it more than you believe? See you on the next one, my dear friends. <laughs>